Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books. And yes, we are back for another driving vlog. I am really enjoying doing these driving vlogs because, well first of all, I miss posting on my booktube channel every day or every other day. <clears throat> and I think a lot when I'm driving. Um, I'm constantly like in my head and you know, I usually am listening to an audiobook late at night, but during the day, uh, I either am like just in silence thinking to myself about, you know, things that I wanna work on, projects I wanna work on, things that are going on in the world, you know, uh, conversations I've had with friends of mine, you know, making gratitude lists in my head, things like that. Um, or I'm listening to music, and music always inspires me to think or, you know, whatever. So, depending on what music I'm listening to. But one of the things I like to do is just put on my iTunes and then um, put shuffle. That's, like, one of my favorite things to do and just listen to music. And um, I actually have certain podcasts in the last couple days. I've been listening to a lot of music that um, I was raised on, a lot of folk music um, that I was raised on that my mom used to listen to, like Bob Dylan and um, Blowing in the Wind and the Times They Are Changing and things like that. I've been listening to a lot the last couple days. And um, anyway, I was thinking today about like classics. We're gonna talk about the classics today, books. And <laughs> you know, I had seen somebody I think it's Dylan the Reader. I can't remember who it was. Somebody put up, I think it was, I'm almost positive it was Dylan. He like put a picture up on Twitter showing um, like the book and then there were none by Agatha Christie. And he was like, is this a good classic? Like he wanted to read a classic. Is this like a good classic to read? And, and I was thinking about that. Like I've never really considered Agatha Christie to be a, a classic. I don't know why, but you know, as somebody that grew up with, my mother was deeply, deeply embedded in literature. Um, she had an English, she, well, she was an education major, an English major, double major in college, and then went on to study different kinds of literature, all, you know, all kinds of world literature, and she loved world literature, and she, you know, read Irish literature like Catherine Ann Porter and uh, James Joyce. And she loved Southern literature, you know, like uh, Eudora Welty and Faulkner and um, Carson McCullers. And so I was raised on all of this kind of world literature that my mom used to always talk about. And she loved these books. And uh, James Joyce's Ulysses is actually, which is supposedly one of the most difficult books to read, was one of my mom's favorite books of life. She absolutely loved that book. And I, you know, tried it several times and never could get into it. I just really, really struggled with it. <clears throat> I think today, in contemporary times, what would be considered maybe down the road, I wonder if there will be classics 50 years from now, and I wonder what books today will be considered classics, you know, 50 years from now. I wonder what books we'll look back on and think, you know, this is a classic piece of literature. I, I definitely think books like, um, I definitely think like Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad, and I, I hope Angie Thomas's um, The Hate You Give. I, I hope one day we look back on that and you know we see these as classics that are taught in classrooms. I'm sure they probably already are in some classrooms. Um, but you know, it's interesting to me is what we define a classic. And I can remember like when I was in high school and early college, and if you know my story, I've been sober for 25 years, and uh, I know that this video is kind of like you're in, the, the lighting is bad, I apologize. But um, I've been sober for 25 years. So when I was in high school and early college, I was a really heavy drinker. And I gravitated towards a lot of literature that had drinking in it. Or um, this expatriate kind of literature of Hemingway and um, a Fitzgerald and... Um, Somerset Maugham and Gertrude Stein. Those were like some of the authors that I loved to read. I loved to read Hemingway and Fitzgerald specifically. Um, the Sun Also Rises. I've actually thought about rereading re these this summer um, because I can remember 
I, when I turned 18, I had read it before, but when I turned 18, I was living in my own apartment. And um, I can remember sitting on the patio that summer and just reading and drinking. Like, it was just, it's very sick when I look back on it and sad, kind of. But reading um, The Sun Also Rises and um, what's the Fitzgerald book? I can't I think of it. Um, well, The Sun Also Rises, it's by Hemingway. But also, um, The Garden of Eden was a book that greatly impacted me. Really, really. And it, it, it's a... It's a book that was kind of, I think, ahead of its time, honestly, because it was his, it was supposedly Hemingway's last book, and he never finished it, um, The Garden of Eden. It has a lot to do with gender roles and gender identity. It's a very interesting book, um, and I remember it, like, kind of profoundly affecting me at that time. Um, even so much as, like, dressing like the characters in the book, and, um, remember the female character, she always wears, like, um, a white button-down collared shirt and like khaki pants or shorts. And I can remember like that whole summer, that was kind of my, whenever I would go out and do stuff with friends, that was kind of my costume. And um, why can't I remember the Fitzgerald book? God, it's so famous. Um, it's very similar to The Sun Also Rises. But anyway, it's one of my favorite books and I can't think of it, I don't know why. But you know, when I was in college and um, I was reading, Take, I, mean, I was an English major. That's why I graduated with an English degree. So, you know, I had to read a lot of classics. But we were also able to um, pick a lot of what we read. And, like, I took an entire class reading the works of Toni Morrison, um, which I feel really, really blessed for. I think Toni Morrison is somebody that her books will be, they already are considered classics. I think they even more so will be down the road. You know, but, uh, and you know, the, like The Color Purple by Alice Walker, I think will be considered a classic. Interestingly enough, uh, back in the day, I don't think you have to do this anymore, but I took the GRE for English because I had to take it to get into graduate school. I was thinking about getting my graduate degree in English. I wanted to get um, either, a graduate degree in English or go in and get my MFA and I didn't do either one of those because I got my master's degree in social work but I um, so when you take the test the GRE for English it's a lot of grammar and things like that on there but I thought it would be heavily influenced with literature and there was I think like two or three questions about literature I know one was by Parad about Paradise Lost because I've never read Paradise Lost I don't think it has affected me in any way that I have not read Paradise Lost. Um, I don't think that it will... Uh, I don't think it would have shaped me. Maybe it would have. I don't know. I don't know. I've never read it. And there's been a lot of classic literature that I've never read. I've never read Jane Eyre. I've never read Wuthering Heights. Um, I've attempted to. I've read some Dickens, Charles Dickens. Um, I don't love that that kind of literature. It, to be honest with you, it bores me, it depresses me, um, it, and I just, I don't love it. And, um, and, and, you know, I think we each have our reading taste of what we like. Interestingly enough, I did, I do love Southern literature, and I loved, once I understood it, I remember reading The Sound uh, and the Fury in high school uh, by Faulkner, and I didn't understand it at all. And then I read it again in college, because I took a class on Southern literature and it was fantastic. And I remember my teacher, uh, she went to Emory and she was fantastic. And she knew all the Southern literature. And, you know, we read um, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers and The Member of the Wedding. And we read Eudora Welty. And we read, um, you know, so much great Southern literature. And I remember reading, we read Faulkner. And I think we read As I Lay Dying. And then we read Sound and the Fury. And I didn't get it. Like, again, and I remember talking to my mom, and she, and it wasn't, my mom never spoke to me in a condescending or patronizing manner, but she almost kind of did in that moment. She's like, what don't you understand about The Sound of the Fury? It's a very simple story. And I said, I don't really, you know, she goes, and it's an important story. And she was talking about that it's a story told from five different points of view, basically, or I can't remember, five or six different points of view. And she broke it down for me. And once she explained it to me that way, like, it was very easy for me to understand. And, um, but, you know, when I look back on my life, and I think about the books that have really changed me as a person, interestingly enough, To Kill a Mockingbird is probably the, the book that changed me the most as a person. 
Um, but I also, it's not just the book, it's also the, the movie. So it's the story, I think, of Jean Louise Scout that has changed me the most. And um, I was talking about this in my vlog not too long ago, <clears throat> that it's really a story of, and I think this is what I locked onto at such a young age, it's really a story of how we understood we understand right from wrong. We understand injustices of the world. We understand all of that from a very young age. Um, and I think that's why the story is, of this court case, is juxtaposed to um, these children's lives and playing around and being scared of Boo Radley, who they don't know, and Boo, what Boo Radley actually represents. And I've always loved the character of Boo Radley. Um, for what he represents, <clears throat> this innocence that we're afraid of because we don't understand it, you know, or that we're afraid of something just because we don't know it or we don't understand it. Um, so I don't know that I can say that had I not read certain other classics that they would have changed me profoundly as well. I don't know. Like, I'd be interested to know in the comment section, like, what's a classic that you read that changed your life? I do know that, like, on BookTube, so many people love, like, Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights and things like that. And, you know, I tried to read those. I really did. And I just could not get into them. I just couldn't. And, you know, I read a lot of the, like, I took a class, I think, on mythology and I had to read a lot of, not mythology, um, but like those, like the cla the classics, like the Greek classics and things like that. And, you know, I just, nothing ever really stuck with me. I didn't enjoy it. And so today, like I think about the books in my life that have really changed me when I look back on them. And um, I can't in all honesty say that out of my top 10 books, even half of them would be classics because they just wouldn't, you know? Um, and so I wonder as we go forward, what is the importance of classics? What is it important to teach classics because we understand our history of literature? Or is it important because they are change that those stories are changing lives? Or to some degree, are they outdated except with the importance of teaching us lit of the history of literature and the history of the world? I think that is one thing that classics represent is that they show us a time and place in history. But I don't know that I And, you know, like, I think I've shown, you know, talking about it in this video that, like, I've read a lot of different kinds of classics, you know, all over the place. And the Southern literature was what I think affected me the most. Maybe because it was more contemporary. I don't know. But, you know, I sometimes feel bad. It was funny. Like, the whole, this whole conversation is kind of starting because... I saw his picture and I thought, well, you know, I should probably read more classics. I think for anybody that is a reader, you always kind of have that inside of you. Like, I should probably be reading more classics. But then I guess the question is why? Why do I feel compelled to, that I need to re read more classics? You know, like, what would it do for me? I'm at a point in my life where I read what I want to read. I read what I think will be a fun story or I read what will help me escape or I read something... <clears throat> I think is currently timely and important. But I don't know that I think that me going back and reading, I mean, you know, I, I'm kind of to the point where I, re I realize, I remember like like the Fountainhead and stuff and everybody talking about, I remember I read this thing one time that said the top like 10 books that change people's lives now I know uh, it's number one today is the Bible, I think, and number two is um, Oh, The Places You Go by Dr. Seuss, which is interesting to me. But back then it was number one was the Bible and number two was Atlas Shrugged. And I can remember, I never pronounced her name right, Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand, I never pronounced it right. But in reading The Fountainhead, which was like one of the most difficult books in the entire world, you know, like I don't ever even, like, I don't even remember if I finished it in all honesty and I don't think it did like it affected me in any like way like I don't you know like I look back at some of these books that I read and I think like the things that have really stuck with me are like Shirley Jackson's The Lottery I remember reading that in college which I think a lot of people read it in high school the short story and I remember that really affecting me um 
and thinking about society and my part of society and things like that. And I remember um, reading Beloved by Toni Morrison and um, Oh, Zora Neale Hurston, Their Eyes Were Watching God. That's probably another book that really affected me, I think, when I was in college reading it. Um, I feel like I read that actually in the Toni Morrison class because I feel like that was one, I think Toni Morrison has come out and said that Zora Neale Hurston was one of her greatest influences. Um, but you know, when I look at books that I've read, like Charles Dickens books and things like that, like in classics that I've actually gotten through, I feel like the Hemingway and the Fitzgerald books and all of that, like, uh, and the, you know, Somerset Maugham, The Moon and Sixpence and things, or those books, like, I, I feel like they affected me at that time and maybe not even in a really positive way. Like, I feel like maybe, I'm not a believer that people watch movies and listen to music and it uh, makes them drink or use drugs, but I was already somebody that did that. And so I think those books made me do it more, like, because that was the culture of those books. I don't know, like, so I don't know that they had a great effect on me in a positive way. I don't know that in my life, in my love of reading, that the classics have had any real major uh, positive effect on me. I just don't know that they do, that I can continue to say, um, that I would encourage people to read classics. I, I would tell people to read whatever they want to read, obviously. But if I had to make a list of like five books that I think that every person should read, I definitely think To Kill Mockingbird would be on that book. But the other four would be contemporary. They would not They would not be classics, and I know that for a fact. So it's an interesting question. I don't know. I was thinking about that when I saw his picture. I was like, what are classics that I've read that I thought were important reads? So, I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know if you're enjoying these little vlogs or if you'd like me uh, to do more sit-down videos. I can do both. And um, I'm just having fun making more videos over here. So, anyway, I love you guys. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.